Good morning, guys. It is Friday, Yay. April 1st. I'm not going to pull any. I'm going to do that. Huh? Huh? I'm not. Okay. So let's start off. We just had our test yesterday, so this should be easy for you to see if you want to um, Please, we're finding the area to be safe. Pause and play when you're ready. Starting off with the first problem tag. What kind of shape is that? That first one. Trapezoid. 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 Okay. What's that formula? A equals one half. B equals H. All righty. Okay. Let's substitute it. A equals one half. Okay. So it's like twenty. Very good. Order of operations then. Okay, that gives me 30. Hey, what do y'all want to do? 30 times 40 times 40. No, no. Now I'm supposed to do Does it matter which one you do? No. 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 Okay. I'm going to do, I hate big numbers, so I'm going to do half of 30. That gives me 15. If you didn't do it this way, that's fine. Let's just do it okay. okay. 15 times 14. 5 by 4 is. 20, 20, 20, 1 by 4 plus 2 6. I need to 5 by 1 5 by 1 1 by 1 210 not just 210 but 210 okay. what did you, you want to try is it a math error what did you say 210 Oh, I see. Write all my words for nothing. I'm sorry. I thought you said 120. I'm sorry. Okay. That next shape is. Why is that one a question? Very good. Okay, same thing. My bases are. Six and nine. One half. Of nine plus six times the height of two. Order of operation says nine plus six, which is fifteen. Which is fifteen. Can I get rid of that half? Half of two is one. Should these be like cakewalks by now? Yeah. Y'all. All right, perfect. Guys. So when I get, when I get a sum point for this, if you have the formula, if you have the correct formula, yes. If you did not put the formula at all, absolutely zero point. Pause, pause. Okay. What, what you say, see? What if you forgot to divide? If you have the one half in there, that would be okay. But one, two, three, if you did not put any of this, if you just have numbers, if you have no formula, then no, you would not get one. No. Okay. The reason why you have to put that formula is because it's a written reminder. Hey, you need to one half it. And if you're choosing not to write the formulas, you're choosing to write that, and you're choosing not to. Okay? I'm not saying that's what you did, but I'm just saying that. All right, real quick. All right, here we go. Today is going to be the last day of our geometry unit on Monday, or, uh, yeah, so looking ahead to the week. Pause. Thank you so much. All right, so today is going to be the last day of our geometry unit. Looking ahead at next week, if you have your calendars, this is all on there. Um, on Monday, I believe we're doing like a review because remember how we retest everything? Yes, do you remember our retest? So on Monday, I will be passing back your test so you can look over it. Um, and then we will be redoing our quiz four, which also serves as a retest on Tuesday. On Monday, we will be going over the most questions, stuff like that, just to practice so that we can have our quiz for on Tuesday. Remember, imagine math. This week would be a great time to do imagine math. Um, and then we'll start up on banking stuff on Wednesday. I know, financial literacy, oh. banking stuff like that. Oh. Okay? So please be aware of that. So we're going to learn the last little lesson talking about volume. Now, in elementary, you already learned about volume, okay? We're just going to be changing things up a little bit. We're only going to be doing volume of rectangular prisms, 
Um, again, it's very much the same as last year, but we're making one adjustment. Okay, so first, before we dive into like the formulas, let's just talk about what volume is. Okay, so what we'll like, and you'll talk about this in science. What is volume? Like, what's the definition? Yes. How much space does it take? Exactly. Okay, it's the amount of space. Something takes up. It's the amount of space. Okay, something takes up. Usually a 3D figure you want to add that. Okay. In the real world, out there in the wide window, where would we use volume? Why would we use volume? Six, one? Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're sure. out there, you let's know. add more specifics. Okay, but like, what would you find the volume of? Yeah. Oh, oh, we're okay. That's a better, yeah. Okay, like water in an aquarium of or Okay, you could talk about like peanuts that fit in a box. You don't know what I'm talking about? Like uh, the fluffy things when you like use packing. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can talk about fireworks in a candy shop. Just a Soda in a candy shop. All of those kinds of things. Pizza in a pizza box. Fun food Friday style. Yes, ma'am. Paint in a paint can. Paint in a paint can. Paint in a jacket. Paint in a jacket. Paint in a Well, paint in a jacket. All right. So, uh, oh. Okay. That's going to be sort of the same thing over here. The example is when we use it, I, I would say it's pretty similar. All right, so um, you can put more examples. Uh, over there, when you use volume, is just talking about how much space. I should have maybe put all those examples over here, but it's fine. Okay, um, some non examples. Is it working? Are you kidding me? Let's do words in your mouth. Work, yeah, okay. Yeah. One in a body. I'm going to say, like, if you're finding the pod, pod, okay, if we were trying to find, like, the area of the bottom of a box, area of the bottom of a box. Okay, if it's something two dimensional. Area is a two-dimensional thing because it's two-dimensional. Um, if you're trying to find like the amount of mm, like wrapping paper that goes on the outside, and you have to find that surface area. You say the house is that the one? What do you mean? It, I I don't want to. That's a confusing one. That could be one way or the other. So I don't have to use that one. Okay. So in elementary school, what formula do y'all use to learn for volume? Length times width times height. Very good. Okay, so in uh, elementary school, y'all learn that V is equal to length times width times height. Okay, let's look at uh, our trusty star chart. Though. Everyone, get your star chart and put your finger on the rectangular person's volume. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. I don't think you're going to be on the Okay, on the star chart, what does it say, though? V equals V. V equals, and it's not just V, V is equal to capital V. Okay? On all of our area formulas, the V's in the uh, in that were all lowercase. And there's a difference in those. Okay? So we're going to talk about what that means. So whenever you see a capital V, that is talking about the area of the base. Okay? Now. How do we find the area of a base? Multiply. You would multiply v times little v times a, or you would multiply like the length times the width, right? V times a is the same time. Base times height is the same thing as length times width, is it not? Okay. So when we're finding length times width, it is the same thing as finding the area of the base. Okay. 
okay? I won't, won't care which formula you use, okay? But when you go into seventh grade, this, and even on the sixth grade start part, they no longer use this formula and they will only see that one. So I want you to make sure you understand, okay? They will completely get rid of length times length times height and use big V8, but just know they're interchangeable. Um, on exams and stuff, will they like drop off or return off? I will correct it. I will always correct it to be an uppercase B because it does make a difference. Um, but I won't take off points this year. Okay? I don't know. Seventh grade might. I don't know. I, don't, I know they want the formulas in seventh grade, but I don't know that they take off for big B versus B. I will always correct it though. Okay? So let's go through these cylinders lengths. A three dimensional figure um, has a length, width, and height. A prism. Is a type of three dimensional figure. So there's usually prisms and then there's pyramids. So those are your basic geometry type shapes. We won't really look at, at pyramids this year. We're only going to look at rectangular prisms this year, but next year you look at like all of them. You get lots of shapes next year. Okay? So a, grid, uh, a prism is when you have two parallel sequences. Okay? So I'm going to use this as an example. Um, so my two parallel bases. They could be the top and the bottom. Okay, y'all don't have to shape that in, but just looking at that, y'all see how the top and the bottom of the box would be like parallel to each other? Okay, but are those the only sides that are parallel? Yeah. In a rectangular prism, what else could be parallel? The front, and the, back. the front and the back could be parallel. Okay, I could say that front side and the back side. Oops, that's really hard to tell the difference, but I could say those, or I could say the two sides. Okay. There's three ways you could look at it. Whenever you get a rectangular prism uh, problem, you could say uh, it will either tell you specifically which one is the basis, and if it doesn't specify, it's implied that the bottom. Okay? But they can change that because we're going up into sixth grade, we can slice up our last just a little bit. Okay? So uh, prisms have two parallel bases, and they are congruent figures. Congruent is a different way of saying. Equal. Equal. Okay, same size, same shape. And a rectangular prism, the bases are congruent rectangles. If it, it was a triangular prism, the two triangles would be the bases. And a hexagonal prism, the hexagon would be the two bases. But we're only looking at rectangular. Rectangular. Okay, um, the volume is the amount of space. Inside a 3D figure, it is measured in cubic feet. Okay, so like for example, instead of inches, if it was inches, if it was like length times width times height, and they were all inches, it's inches times inches times inches. That means it's going to be inches cubed. It's cubic inches. Does that sort of kind of make sense? Since it was, uh, when we looked at area, it was length times width. So that was inches squared because there was only two inches. Because it was ball length, width, and height. All right. Moving on, we're going to get a little bit of practice now. So, first, we're just going to practice with the bases. Big B stands for the area of the base. So it's saying find the area of big B. In this problem, are all the bases on the bottom or are they on different sides? Different sides. So if I was just trying to find the area of big B, again, you can use, uh, I'm going to use base times height because that's what the shape is. Okay? I noticed that my shape is a rectangle, my shaded base is a rectangle. What are the base and height of that shaded rectangle? And then two, and two, and two and five. Okay, notice I did my formula and I substituted. Now I'm going to solve to get 10 centimeters squared. Centimeters squared is my answer. Okay, again, I heard someone say time to height. It does not say that. It says to find the area of the feet. Okay, it doesn't say to find the volume, it's just the area. Which one is going to bring us to the right? Because, uh, so let's take this back. Let me, let me start off. Okay? 
Again, I'm finding the area of the green beans. This is the shaded thing. What shape is that shaded thing? Rectangle. Rectangle. Okay. So let's say I didn't use the D. If I was trying to find the area, how do I find the area of a rectangle? A is equal to D H. Okay. Substitute in two times five. That gives me two times five is ten centimeters squared. Okay. Same exact thing. Except that instead of putting A, we have the capital letter of B. It's the same thing. It's just, it's, it's weird. It's an adjustment. I know it's going to be like, Ugh. but just tell us it. Okay? All right. Let's do one more. Okay? So starting with the area of the base. What kind of shape is the base? Rectangle. So I'm going to put B equals B H. B is the same thing as A, but... We're just going to practice it the weird way. Okay? Let's substitute in. What is my base and height? 6 and 16. 6 and 16. Go ahead and take a second to multiply. Okay? When we multiply that, we get 96 centimeters squared. Do the last one on your own. Ready? Say go. Don't shout out the answer. Just do it. Show. Hand down. Thank you. Okay? Area of the base, big B stands for area of the base. My base length is 15, and my height is 4, I got right. 7. 7, okay? Because this length, I'm looking for this, this rectangle, this length is 15. Do we agree with that? Yes. This length right here is the same as this length right here, that is 7. Okay? So, either way, 15 times 7 or 7 times 15, you get the same multiplication problem. Math, 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 math. When we multiply, we get 105 inches squared. Okay? So again, just as wide, so this rectangular box. So you don't need to flip anything, but just visualize. Okay? It's saying this top part is the base. Okay? That means it's the same thing as the bottom part. Okay? You don't need to flip anything. They have the same dimensions. They're two congruent. Okay? So, let's keep practicing. Um, we actually haven't found any area or volume yet, so let's just, let's take a look. Let me reach by my monthly real quick. All right. I'm going to do a few problems with you on this page, uh, just so we actually have a uh, practice. So we're going to find the now volume. Okay, the volume formula is V equals big B H. I'm going to start practicing the weird one. Okay, so for the volume to find big B, big B stands for the area of the base. Very good. If you need to write that down, big B is area of base. Okay, because it doesn't specify, it's implied that it is my bulk, uh, my bottom and top. Okay, so to find the area of the base, let's say it's implied that it's this. What, what would I do? Five times five. five. I'm going to put that in parentheses, and then my height is twenty-five. Five. five. Okay, five times five is twenty-five. Twenty-five, 25 times five is. If I have five quarters, how much do I have? A hundred and hundred and twenty-five. Because now I have found the volume. I did inches times inches times inches. My units are going to be inches cubed. Okay. Let me do another one. Let's do four. Yes. Okay. A cereal box has the dimensions of four. What is the volume? So we're going to start with our formula. What's my formula? B capital B A. Hi, big B stands for area of the base. You're a jet. Okay, so let's substitute it. How do I find the area of the base? If it doesn't tell me what the base is, we'll assume it's the, the top or the bottom. Okay, because they're the same shape. Okay, so what are the dimensions of either the top or the bottom? Eight by one fourth. One fourth. Okay. Um, do you all want fractions? Do you all want fractions? 
decimals. One fourth is the same thing as 0.25. Okay, so 8 times 3.25. I still need to multiply by h, my height, which is 12 and a half, which is 12.5. Are we understanding where I'm getting these numbers from? Yeah. Hopefully so. Okay, let's do this together. Let's do inside first. It doesn't technically matter, but let's do it. 3.25 times 8. Go for it. Oh, I'm safe. Bring your All right, 5 by 8 is 40. Carry the 4. 2 by 8 is 16. Plus 4 is 20. 3 by 8 plus 2. 26. Move the decimal twice. Okay, so we're at 26. I still need to multiply by 12.5. Ready, set, go. I'm going to put 12.5 on top. Multiply and go. Okay, what did you go get? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, we got 325 inches cubed. Inches cubed. Please stop the tapping. Thank you so much. Okay? All righty. How do you get to 26? Uh, it's a zero. Sorry, let me rewrite that. Okay, it, it says 325.0. I all right, and lastly, let's do number six. Okay, read the problem. Write and solve an equation, determine the missing dimension. What happened? They already gave us B. We need to find B. We need to find H. Okay, so just like always, I start with my formula. What's that formula? Big B times H. Substitute it in. Tell me what's right. Okay, I should hear multiple people telling me what to do, not talking to others. Equal six. Equal six, thank you. Times four point nine. Times four point nine. Eight. Okay. So, what should I do first in this situation? What do you think? So, I think you should do a parentheses, and then with the heading, you divide it by one. Great idea. I love that. Okay? 6 times 4.9. Ready to send that? Agree with my answer? No, it is the one second. Oh, not, not a, yeah. Okay. Okay. I like to rewrite it because then it helps you visualize that. Next up, I need to. Do the equation. Yeah, how do I get H by itself? Divide by 29. Very good. Okay, 102.9 divided by 29.4. Do I leave my decimal or move it? Move it. Move it how many times? One. One. Do I already do on the outside? The other. Very good. Okay, 294. Does it fit into one? No. No. Does it fit into 10? No. Does it fit into 102? No. No. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and round that up to like 300 or just three. How many times do you think three goes into? I'm gonna again. I usually just like ignore the last two, ignore the last two. How many times is like two? I'm gonna round it up to three. How many times does three go into ten? I'm ignoring these last two. How many times does three go into ten? Three. Three times. Let's try that out. Two hundred ninety-four times three. Twelve. Do you think you could fit it another time for 1029? No. It'd be pushing it, but probably not. 
Okay, so let's try that. Okay, eight, eight, so two, seven, twelve, nine. Okay, could I have to do it another time? No. No. Okay, so am I done? No, I need to. Okay, how do I do it? Add a zero and bring it down. So again, that same technique, just looking at the first two numbers. Again, three goes into 14. How many times that make? I think, let's try five. Okay, because it's probably going to be really close. 294 times five. Probably going to be really close. Four by five is? Okay, that two. 45, 47. Ooh, this is looking good so far. Well, uh, 10 plus 4, 8. Boom. Oh, okay. 3.5. 14 seconds. Okay. So, 3.5 is my, my answer, my H. Okay, because those cancel out. Okay, what are the units going to be? It's just going to be meters. The height is just feet. The height is just meters. Okay? So, what you're going to keep working on, I believe, is all even. It says even. So, I already did even. So, keep working. Um, we'll check it in a second. Uh, but if you're at home, you can check it on your own. And just reminders that your homework is going to be odd and the throwback. And imagine that. And do it. Okay. Thank you.